स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया So in the previous class we introduced the concept of uh, level surfaces and we also uh, saw two results that uh, when you have a level surface on a region R then um, uh, at every point of R only one and only one level surface uh, that can pass through that point uh, that uh, that point in R and uh, we also um, saw another result uh, which says that uh, gradient of a function is perpendicular to the surface f x y z equals to uh, c. So, uh, now that we have those two uh, basic results, uh, today we will start with the concept of uh, directional derivative and uh, we will try to work out few examples based on directional derivative. So, we will start with a formal definition, what do they actually mean? So, directional derivative of a scalar function all right so the formal definition goes like this let fxyz defines a scalar field in a region R and uh, let P be any point in this region and suppose Q is a point in this region in the neighborhood in the neighborhood in the neighborhood b o u r in the neighborhood of the of of the point p of the point P in the direction of A given unit vector. So, this is very important. We also we always have to have a unit vector when we are calculating the directional derivative of a given unit vector A cap, then limit q tends to p f q minus f p divided by p q if it exists is called the directional derivative derivative of f at the point at the point p in the direction of a cap in the direction of a cap so basically what it means is uh, you have a you have a point P on a um, on a uh, on, on a surface f x y z equals to c in a region R, and then you have another point, let's say Q, in the neighborhood of the point P. So when P when when Q approaches to P, then if this limit exists, then uh, then this uh, uh, this limit is actually called as the directional derivative 
uh, in the direction of this uh, unit vector a cap. So, this point Q which we have chosen. So, this point Q is of course, uh, is a point in the neighborhood uh, is of course, a point in the neighborhood of the point P, but it is also in the direction of a unit vector a cap. So, it is a point in the direction of a uh, in the direction of a unit vector a cap and then we calculate this uh, limit and if this limit exists, then we say that the then we say that this limit is actually the directional derivative is the directional derivative of the function f at the point p in the direction of a cap all right so basically what it means is what it means is so physical meaning or what it means is uh, interpretation we can write interpretation of directional derivative so i write it as dd so, interpretation is let P be any point. So, what we are saying is let P be any point x, y, z and uh, Q be the point x plus delta x, y plus delta y and z plus delta z and uh, suppose p q which is a very small arc length is delta s. So, it is a very small arc length uh, and we assume that the length is delta s all right. So, suppose p q is equal to delta s then delta s is a small element is a small element at p in the direction with a small element at p in the direction of a cap and uh, if delta f is equals to f of x plus delta x y plus delta y and z plus delta z minus f x y z is equals to so this is our point q this is our point p so f q minus f p then del f by del s represents the average rate of change the average rate of change of f per unit distance in the direction of a cap and now the directional derivative f at the point p in the direction of a cap is basically limit q goes to p f q minus f p divided by p q is equals to basically limit q goes to p or delta s goes to 0 or we can write delta s goes to 0 del f by del s. So, this is nothing but our d f d s because when delta s goes to 0 this uh, whole thing will converge to d f d s and uh, it represents. So, basically it represents the rate of change of the rate of change of f with respect to distance at p in the direction of a cap which is a unit vector. So, what it does what it means physically is that um, 
uh, we have two neighboring points on the surface f x y z equals to c and then that is small increment in the function f or in the in the, uh, from the point p to q is denoted by delta f and delta s. So, that uh, a small uh, increment in the function f we write it as delta f which is basically f q minus f p and uh, the small uh, uh, element which is this p q is basically delta s. So, delta f by delta s when delta s goes to 0 is actually the average rate of change of f per unit distance. So, how much the, uh, uh, how much the function um, is changing how it is changing per unit distance is given by del f del s uh, in the direction of the vector a cap. So, we always have a unit vector along which we are uh, calculating the rate of change of the function f and uh, the directional derivative of the function f at uh, p at this point p is basically uh, when uh, limit q goes to p uh, we write f, f q minus f p by p q which is basically our del f by del s. And, uh, at the point p we have this uh, we have this uh, delta s this uh, surface element is that a small element at the point p in the direction of a cap. So, that is what we are uh, calculating here. So, this is basically our rate of change of the function f uh, per unit distance in the direction of a cap at the point p. So, this is represents the rate of change of the function f with respect to distance or per unit distance uh, at the point p in the direction of a cap. So, a cap is a unit vector at the point p and uh, uh, this uh, d f d s is actually denoting our rate of change of the function f. So, this is what we mean physically by the directional derivative. So, at a certain point you have a unit vector and you need to calculate the rate of change of that function along that unit vector. So, that is that is what simple in, uh, in simple words it mean. So, you have a unit vector at a point p on a surface f x y z equals to c. So, your directional derivative is actually the rate of change of that function f x y z uh, with respect to distance of course, uh, in the direction of that unit vector at the point p. So, or whichever point it is where you are calculating the directional derivative and this is what we mean physically or the physical interpretation of the directional derivative. Now, um, that we have stated uh, d f d s is basically that rate of change of f with respect to distance. How do we calculate the directional derivative? Do we really have to differentiate uh, f x y z equals to c? So, do we really have to differentiate f x y z equals to c uh, as uh, del f del s or, or do we have to calculate d f d s to calculate uh, the directional derivative or is there any other formula to calculate the directional derivative? So, that we will now um, uh, prove in terms of a small theorem. So, whether we calculate this thing or whether there is some other tool that will help us calculate the directional derivative. So, that we are going to that, that, is, some, that is something we are going to see now. So, let me put a small theorem here. So, today it is theorem 1 and it says that the directional derivative the directional derivative of a scalar field f at a point p x y z in the direction of a unit vector a cap is given by d f d s is equals to gradient of f at the point p times a cap. So, we have to calculate the gradient of the function at the point p. So, I can put a p here and that basically says that the gradient of the function has to be calculated at the point p times the unit vector a cap. So, that means instead of calculating d f d s we can just using this theorem the directional derivative of the function f at the point p in the direction of a is given by gradient of f at the point p dot product with a cap. So, this d f d s is equals to this. So, this d f d s is equals to gradient of f at the point p times a cap. 
So, this is a very small result and uh, we will try to prove that and see how this thing uh, this d f d s equals to this uh, gradient of f at p times a cap. So, the proof or the solution. So, let uh, f x y z be a scalar field. So, let f x y z be a scalar field. in the region R and uh, let p x y z be any arbitrary point in the region R. So, p x y z belongs to R. So, then, then I can write O p or the position vector of the point p is equals to x i y z and set K, all right. Now, if S denotes the distance of P of P from some fixed point, from some fixed point. A in the direction in the direction of A cap, then delta x denotes a small element, denotes a small element at P in the direction of A cap. And therefore, dr ds is a unit vector at the point P in this direction that is d r d s is equals to a cap. So, what we are doing is we are assuming um, uh, the distance of uh, p uh, from any fixed point a in the direction of a cap. So, in the direction of a cap we assume any arbitrary point let us say a and s denotes the distance and uh, then in that case a small element or a small increment uh, in the point p uh, in the direction of a then that small increment is denoted by delta x. So, if we are moving along the surface and uh, from p to let us say q or p to a we are going then that small increment is basically our delta x then in the direction and uh, then in the direction of a of course. So, therefore, d r d s basically the, the rate of change of r with respect to the distance is a unit vector uh, in the direction of this uh, in the direction of this uh, unit vector a cap. So, this basically d r d s is, uh, is a unit vector at the point p in the, in the direction of a cap all right. So, but our r is equals to x i plus y j plus z k. So, from here our d r d s will be d x d s times i d y d s times j and d z d s times k all right. So, now our gradient of f times a cap what is this? So, this one will be del f del x times uh, a 1 and uh, then del f del y times a 2 and uh, del f del z times a 3 right. So, um, this uh, a actually so this a 1 a 2 a 3 will be actually we can write it now. So, d r d s is basically d x d s from here d y d s and d z d s. Now, d r d s is equals to a cap 
So, that means if I write this one as a cap, so the components of a cap will be a 1, a 2, a 3. So, a 1 equals to dx ds, a 2 equals to dy ds and a 3 equals to dz dx. So, I am substituting them here. So, del f del x times dx ds del and uh, this one will be uh, dx ds and uh, this one will be del f uh, del y times dy ds and uh, del f del z times dz ds. So, since dz and del z they are a small element, so we can cancel this uh, 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 this uh, this um, del del x the del f, uh, this uh, del x del x. So, then this will be df uh, del f del s uh, del f del y and then del f. Uh, so, d del f del s del f del s and then this one again will be del f del s. So, ultimately if I if I multiply. So, if I so, ultimately, um, so what I am trying to say is that we can write it something like this 1 by d s and then what I am trying to say is del f del x times d x del f del y times d y and del f del z times d z. So, this, this is what we can do here and now this is nothing but our d f. So, that is from differential calculus this is our d f. So, I can write it as d f d s. Now, we know that d f d s is the directional derivative uh, at the point p in the direction of a. So, that is what physically it means from the definition of directional derivative. So, this is our directional derivative of the function f at the point p in the direction of a. So, what we have is we have d f d s is equals to gradient of f times a cap. And uh, if we want to calculate the directional derivative, then we can calculate the gradient of the function f at the point p this is very important times the unit vector a. So, this is the required formula formula to calculate directional derivative all right. So, and this is what we wanted to prove. So, the directional derivative of a scalar field at the point uh, p in the direction of a unit vector a cap is given in this fashion and uh, just assuming some basic results from the differential calculus and uh, not assuming, but using those results from the differential calculus, we can be able to show that uh, the directional derivative d f d s is equals to gradient of f at the point p times a cap. And this is what, uh, this is what uh, is equal to uh, our directional derivative. All right. So, now we will try to work out few examples before we go to our next topic. So, let us let us um, calculate the directional derivative or work out few examples on level surfaces all right. So, in the previous class we started with level surfaces and in today's class we started with uh, um, directional derivative. So, we will work uh, we will try to um, solve few examples on both of these two topics. So, the first one is first example find a unit normal find a unit normal a vector to the level surface x square y plus 2 x z equals to 4 at the point 2 minus 2 and 3. So, our given level surface is x square plus x square y plus 2 x z equals to 4 and we have to calculate the unit normal vector at the point. So, let us put a p here at the point p uh, 2 minus 2 and 3. So, what we are going to do first of all from the from the result on uh, level surfaces we know that gradient of f is a normal to this level surface. So, here it says that find a unit normal. So, we have to find a normal to this uh, surface uh, uh, given here and then dividing it with its uh, magnitude will give us the unit normal all right. So, those two steps are clear. So, first of all we have to calculate its gradient. So, here the equation 
of the level surface is f x y z equals to x square y plus 2 x z equals to 4 all right and uh, and uh, we know that gradient of f is perpendicular or normal to the surface f then first of all we calculate the gradient of f gradient of f would be gradient of x square y plus 2 x z. Um, of course, gradient of 4 will be 0. So, calculating this one is not difficult. So, del del x 2 x y plus 2 z times i plus del del y would be del x square j and del del z will be 2 x k. So, this is the required gradient of f and uh, now the gradient of f at the point p and p is 2 minus 2 and 3. So, if I substitute uh, then it will be uh, 2 times 2 minus 2 uh, plus 2 times 3 times i plus x square which is 2 square times j and this one is 2 times 2 k. So, this will be ultimately um, I do not know minus uh, uh, 2 i plus 4 j plus 4 k and uh, therefore, this gradient of f. So, the gradient of f or um, minus of 2 i plus 4 j plus 4 k is normal or oh, sorry is a is a is normal or perpendicular to the surface is normal or perpendicular to the surface f x y z all right, but we have to find out a unit normal or uh, unit vector perpendicular to this. So, to give the unit normal we write it as 4 j plus 4 k and then we divide it by its magnitude. So, that means uh, minus 2 square which is 4 plus uh, 4 square is 16 plus 16. So, ultimately this will be minus 2 i plus 4 j plus 4 k and then this will be uh, 32 plus 40. So, we can write 2 square root of 10 is a unit normal or unit vector unit normal or unit vector perpendicular to the surface f x y z equals to c and f x y z is basically our x square y plus 2 x z equals to um, equals to 4. So, that c is 4. So, this is the required uh, this is the uh, wait this one is a 16 16 32 plus 4 36. Okay. So, this has to be 6 it is not 40 it is uh, 36. So, it will be 6. So, this is the required uh, unit normal uh, perpendicular to the surface um, f x y z equals to c. And uh, you see we had a we had a equation of a level surface here in this example uh, we had a equation of a level surface. So, we uh, write uh, we wrote this uh, level surface as f x y z equals to c and then we had to calculate the gradient because gradient is a vector normal to the level uh, normal to the surface f x y z equals to c and then we calculated the gradient at the point p and then we divided it with its uh, magnitude and that gave us the unit normal um, uh, or uh, unit vector perpendicular to the surface uh, x square y plus 2 x z equals to 4 at the point 2 minus 2 and 3. You also have to make sure whether this point lies on that level surface uh, on that level surface or not because we can do all this calculation, but always make sure that this point lies there. So, if I substitute there then this will be 4, uh, so minus 8. Um, minus 8 and that will be 4 12. So, of course, this point lies on the level surface. So, before you calculate anything you also have to make sure the given point p 
lies on that sur level surface or not. So, here in this case it does lie on that level surface and uh, therefore, the gradient of f um, is actually normal to that level surface at the point p and if you divide it with its magnitude then that is the that is the uh, that is the unit normal here I can write it as gradient of f cap all right. So, today we saw uh, one example motivated from the level surface and unit normal in our next class we will continue with the examples on uh, level surfaces and directional derivative just to make the concepts clear and I look forward to you in your next class thank you.